Senator Hawley. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Perk, I'd like to just continue Senator Ossoff's line of questioning. He was just asking about the First Amendment. You said that you had a number of cases on the speech side of the First Amendment as Solicitor General. Is that right? That's correct. You also had some religion clause cases too, though, didn't you? I believe I've had one. So let's talk about when you were Solicitor General defending the governor's executive order that closed churches in the state. Do you remember that executive order? Uh, yes, Senator. So the executive order said that all indoor gatherings of 10 or more people were banned, with some exceptions. Do you recall? I, I believe it said that, uh, that there was no limits on outdoor gatherings, and if it was not possible to have uh, an outdoor gathering, then uh, you could have it inside with 10 people. Okay, so if it's, if it's 10 or more people, you can't have it indoors unless it is impossible. Here's what you told the court, here's who you told the court would absolutely have to be able to meet indoors and function indoors, regardless of the governor's executive order. Airports, buses, train terminals, medical facilities, shopping mall, shopping centers, Walmart, Lowe's, and other retail businesses of all kinds. At the same time, you told the court churches should be close. Churches should have to meet outside or just not meet at all. Why is that? Why is it that Lowe's and Walmart, they absolutely have to be open? They're essential. Churches, eh, good luck to you. Well, Senator, of course, I didn't design that policy. I was a lawyer defending a client. These are, but didn't you? I thought, I thought that you were the Solicitor General making these arguments. Uh, Senator, I had a brief involvement in that case, and I actually think my involvement... Wait, wait, so you, you didn't, you, you weren't, these aren't your arguments? You didn't say this to the court? Uh, uh, Senator, I never filed a brief, uh, so what happened is uh, the claim was filed, and before... You weren't Solicitor General defending the executive order at the time? Oh, yes, Senator. Okay. Yes, Senator. All right. So let's just skip all that, and let's just get to, to the substance here. Let's, you were the Solicitor General. You defended it. You made the arguments. So why is it that Walmart and Lowe's can be open, but churches had to be closed? Uh, Senator, I think that if you study that case, uh, you I've read the case. I have it right here. The, the procedural history, you'll see that it actually reflects my respect for religious liberty. So at that time, in May of 2020, uh, the prevailing law was ju Chief Justice uh, Why is it respectful to, to close churches but not to close Walmart and Lowe's? Listen, I got nothing against Walmart and Lowe's. I like those stores fine. I was at both of them last weekend. But I was also in church last weekend. And what the procedural history shows is in jurisdiction after jurisdiction during COVID, governments discriminated, and I use that word advisedly, discriminated against people of faith particularly Christian churches, Catholic churches, Orthodox Jewish synagogues, including your state, including this executive order. I want to know why. Do you, why was it that you argued that churches ought to be closed but Lowe's could be open? Explain that to me. Uh, Senator, so what Chief Justice Roberts said in the South Bay decision uh, was that those kind of retail establishments have short-lived durations, and for uh, the relevantly similar uh, activity, uh, was Short-lived duration. I, I, don't, I don't know what you're talking about. Well, S Senator, if, if I could... If I, if was it a mistake to close churches while you allowed Lowe's and Walmart to be open? So that is what the Supreme Court held about a year later. And, and the point I'm trying to make... I'm asking is that, you, yes, was it a mistake for you to argue to this court that it was fine to close these churches, but Lowe's and Walmart could be open? Do you regret it? Uh, Senator, I, I had a duty to represent my so you client. So you don't regret it? Uh, I... I you have the benefit of retrospect now. Do you regret it? Uh, Senator, I, I don't think it would be appropriate for me to criticize the policy decisions that I was asked to so you don't. You have no problem with it. Here's what else you told the court. You also told the court that if a church raised an objection to this, if the church said, no, 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 we think we need to in meet indoors, who did they have to answer to? They had to explain themselves to the sheriff or local law enforcement, the cops. And the cops would then make a determination about the church's theology. Do you remember that? Do you remember that? Yes, yes, Senator. Yeah. And so do you remember what the court said about that? So the court uh, enjoined uh, the governor's order in that respect. The court says this court has grave concerns about how that answer, your answer, comports with the free exercise clause. Then the court went on to say that, yeah, you couldn't enforce the law. Why not? The government cannot treat, I'm quoting, cannot treat religious worship as a world apart from non-religious activities with no good or, more importantly, no constitutional explanation. What do you have to say about that? Uh, Senator, uh, after that uh, TRO enter, uh, order was entered, 
uh, in consultation with my client, we chose not to appeal yeah, at, a at a time when it was uh, abundantly clear that we would have prevailed on appeal because the prevailing law at the time was Chief Justice Roberts's concurrence in South Bay. And so I actually think that that reflects... Well, so you were doing, you, you're, you're saying that you really were doing churches a favor by making these arguments for them, by shutting them down, while loads of Walmart and bars and, and who knows what else were, were all open? Uh, well, Senator, I didn't design that policy. You defended it, and you just sat here and told me you don't have any regrets about it. Let, here, here's the deal. I've seen a parade of people sit in your seat who did the same thing, the same exact thing. Our respect for our rights, our constitutional rights, our civil liberties, they're not tested when it's easy. They're tested when it's hard. After 9-11, we found out who really believed in civil liberties and who didn't. In the COVID era, we found out who believed in the right to free exercise and who didn't. And it looks like you didn't. And now you were in good company. There were a lot of people just like you who did what you did, who discriminated against churches, who defended it, and said, well, it's just, it's a necessity. It's a necessity. But what that tells me is when push comes to shove, you think the First Amendment is optional. It's not optional. And I'm, I haven't voted for a single person who shut down churches. And I'm sure as heck not going to vote for you. And I'll just say to what remains of this administration, if you keep sending people up here who voted to shut down churches and openly discriminated against people of faith, you're going to get this reaction every darn time. You should be telling me you regret this. It was an error. It was unconstitutional. You shouldn't have made those arguments. In retrospect, you regret it. That would be the answer you should have given. You didn't, and you will not have my vote. Mr. Park, would you like to complete an answer to any of those questions? Thank you, Chair Durbin. So uh, what I was, I was trying to explain is that uh, I was invited by the court to defend the governor's order uh, less than 24 hours at a, at a, after the complaint was filed, filed at a TRO hearing. Uh, I never filed a brief. Uh, we filed a declaration from uh, the chief medical officer for the state. Uh, I did my duty to appear at the TRO hearing and advocate for my client's uh, interests. But after the adverse decision the following day, in consultation with my client, we chose not to appeal when the controlling law at the time was pretty clear that we would have prevailed because Chief Justice Roberts, a couple days later, issued his concurring opinion in South Bay. It wasn't until almost a year later, uh, with Chief Justice Roberts in dissent, uh, that the free exercise analysis in Tandon and Brooklyn Diocese uh, was, was, was different. Uh, and, and that's why, at that time, there were about 35 states, including, my, by my understanding, about 15 states with Republican governors that had similar or more restrictive uh, limitations on group congregate worship. But we chose, uh, and the governor chose, uh, to issue a new executive order, to not appeal, and to exempt all religious activity from uh, the limitations. Thank you, Mr. Park. Senator Hirono. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Congratulations, Mr. Park.